Hey there, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Now, one of the potential promises of the Raspberry Pi 5 was that it could be used with NVMe uh, solid state storage, an SSD with uh, an M-Type 2 one. Now, that wasn't initially available when the Pi 5 came out. It's possible because the Pi 5 has access to a PCI connector. And in fact, the official uh, solutions from Raspberry Pi are still not available. However, there are some third party ones. In particular, today we're going to be looking at NVMe based by Pi Moroni. Now, it allows you to connect an M2 NVMe drive to your Pi 5. In fact, you can boot off it. So, Goodbye SD cards. Now it took me quite a while to get hold of one, but I finally got hold of one. So this video is a kind of review and a look at the advantages of using NVMe drives with a Raspberry Pi 5. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now obviously SD cards have many, many advantages, including the fact that they're relatively cheap, they're easily to get hold of, you don't have to buy huge terabyte, you know, you can buy like a 32 gigabyte one like that. And of course, there's a flexibility. So you can try one OS on your Raspberry Pi or a particular project, then you can swap out the cards and try another one and so on. However, they do have some disadvantages. Speed is one of them, although the Raspberry Pi 5 does have a much greater speed, uh, 10 megabytes a second uh, compared to the previous generations. And also some people are worried about their long-term reliability. Now, when using an NVMe drive, of course, we can uh, use a proper solid state hard drive, what we might use in a PC or a desktop. You've got great improvements in speed, hopefully improvements in reliability and certainly improvements in sort of storage capacity. So with the NVMe base from Pi Moroni, you can connect an M2 uh, solid state drive to your Raspberry Pi. So we look at three separate things in this video, the actual physical hardware, then how you get Raspberry Pi OS on that hardware and any other software setup that you need to do. And then finally, does it improve the performance? Is it worth it? Okay, so let's start by looking at the hardware. So the NVMe base is a card that goes on the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. Now we're often familiar with hats that go on top of the Raspberry Pi. This one in fact goes on the bottom and it uses a small ribbon cable to connect from the uh, base plate to the Raspberry Pi 5, the PCI connector. So it's a ribbon cable for the PCI. Now assembling it is fairly simple. You have to put on the kind of little spacers in each of the four holes that are provided. They give you a bag of screws. So you just pick out the right screws and they are a bit, sometimes they are a bit similar trying to work out which one's which, but if you pay attention, you can work out uh, what they do. So you put in the spacers. Okay, then you need to connect in the uh, NVMe drive. And the way you fix that is the best way I found, and I think according to the official video, you stick a screw upwards from the bottom, you put a nut on it, you then put the drive down, then you put a second nut on it. And once you've done that, you've got the drive connected. And then now the most tricky part is actually connecting the PCIe cable. And it does have good arrows on it, uh, so you know which end goes to which end. You have to pull back those connectors, you know, the ribbon cable connectors. Be very careful. I've broken way too many of those in my lifetime, so be really, really careful. Not on this particular board, but in general, I find those ribbon cable connectors, all, I always seem to be too, you know, oh, let's pull that out and it all goes flying. So be really careful with that. Okay, you put in one end, probably start with the Raspberry Pi end, that's what I did, and then kind of orientate yourself. You, you'll want to flip over in the end, so make sure that you get that uh, set up right. You can unflip it, connect in the other one, and then flip it together. And then once you have it nicely put together, you can then screw in the other screws to make sure it's all secure. And from the hardware point of view, that's it. Now, in terms of software, the easiest, easiest way, I think there are a couple of other ways to do this, but the easiest way to do this is basically just to boot up uh, Raspberry Pi OS using an SD card on that Raspberry Pi 5. So prepare that as a way you do before. I've got lots of videos about that here on this channel. So you probably want to use the Raspberry Pi imager on a PC, create an SD card, and then boot up on that. Then what you want to do is install the Raspberry Pi imager on the Raspberry Pi 5, and then you want to say to it, well, actually write the OS to the NVMe drive, which will then appear in the list of devices that are available. And then you just need to wait. It will download and write it to it. Somewhere along the way, you'll also want to make sure that you've got the latest bootloader firmware installed, and there is a command you can run that will double check that for you. So it's called rpi-eeprom-update. If you run that with the minus A flag, then it will automatically download and install the latest uh, bootloader for you. 
after you do that, you are going to need to go in and change the boot order in the Raspberry Pi config program. It's under the advanced menu there. And you can make sure it does boot off the NVMe drive if it doesn't, uh, if it can't find an NSD card. Now, there's also another couple of other things that you'll want to do. Once you've booted up with your new NVMe drive, you can enable faster PCI uh, Gen 3. There's a hack around to do that. You need to edit the slash boot slash config dot text file and add this DT param line and in the all section at the bottom. Uh, and there are full instructions on how to do this. You need to cut and paste that actually on the Pi Moroni uh, website. Now the PCI 3 uh, isn't officially supported. However, it does seem to work uh, very well. So I've got that enabled on mine and that's absolutely great. And that's it. You should now be up and running without an SD card, but with an NVMe drive. So the question is, is it worth it? Does it give you anything besides that, you know, possibility of big storage and of course that reliability factor? Well, it depends on what you're going to do. For for example, if you try to boot from an SD card, a high speed one at the maximum rating for the Pi 5, it goes from just pressing the reset button to the desk, it takes about 19 seconds. Now, if you do that from NVMe, it takes about 15 seconds. So what about launching an application? So if you run something like Firefox, then if you launch that on an SD card in about five seconds. Now, if you launch it from the NVMe, it takes four seconds. So yes, it is faster. Yes, you can see the difference, but are you going to notice it? Well, in that case, probably not. I thought compiling might be improved. So if I you run a project like HTOP, I can compile that from sources, about 40,000 lines of code. Uh, actually, it's exactly 6.3 seconds on both systems. So that shows that compiling there is probably more CPU and memory uh, kind of bottlenecked rather than actual I.O. bottlenecked because it didn't make any difference. But then I then tried an actual disk intensive task. If you want to create a tar file, we're of you know about three and a half gigabytes. I tarred up the slash USR, the slash user uh, directory, and it took around three minutes and 15 seconds on the SD card. But when you do it on the NVMe drive, it takes 13 seconds. Yes, you heard that right, 13 seconds. So you can see the huge difference when it's a very, very intensive IO uh, kind of operation in this case, just do this, create this tar file from these files. It's reading and writing because it's reading what you're, you're, you're archiving and then writing it at the same time. NVMe one, you know, more than 10 times faster, more than 10 times uh, faster. So there you go. So if you're doing lots of IO intensive operations, then certainly you're gonna need an NVMe drive. If you wanted to, for example, do network attached storage, and this would be a great way to do network attached storage, uh, maybe have an external hard drive, a traditional hard drive for kind of keeping a backup of what you've got on the NVMe drive or use another Pi 5 and copy over the network, whatever. But that's going to be much quicker than using, you know, an SD card. So there you go. Am I keeping it like that? Yes, I am. That's all connected up now. That's absolutely great. My Pi 5 is going to run in that configuration. Very, very happy with it. If you're not using your Pi 5 for that kind of thing, you're not using it as a desktop, you're not using it for IO intensive operations, you're just using it for projects, for robotics, for sensors, for GPIO, for learning a bit of Python, whatever you're gonna do like that, then you might not necessarily have to invest in one of these. A nice, it's a nice thing, it's a, it's a good thing, but it's not essential by any means. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sim. This is Gary Space. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions about the NVMe base, do let me know in the comments and I'll try as best as I can to answer. I'm not affiliated with Pi Moroni anyway whatsoever, so I'll just can answer it if I can from my own experience. Okay, if you like this kind of videos, please do consider subscribing to the channel. I suppose that's it. I'll see you in the next one.